there, Chris Sev here. Today, I wanna to talk about my five favorite reasons that I love Next.js. And this is also gonna be the same video as five reasons why I think I'm gonna use Next.js for all of my production level projects over plain React.js. Now, I was not on board with Next.js when it first came out. I'm not the biggest fan of jumping into a framework right out of the gate. I kinda of like to let itself uh, grow and prove itself over time. And as we see with Next.js is it has some staying power. It's been around a little bit and it just got some funding and a, a lot of funding. So I really like the trajectory that Next.js is going. So I have no problem saying Next.js, I'm gonna use it for my next production level application instead of just plain old React. So to start us off, I went into my terminal here and I actually started a new project with npx create next app, and I just called it five next things. So create next app is very similar to create react app, except it gives us the foundation for a next application. So let's get into my five reasons. Number one, I really like the out of the box routing that Next.js gives us. And this is page level writing, uh, file system routing. And if I go into my settings here for my pages, you can see that we start out with an app.js and an index.js. So app is kind of an overall layout, which is awesome feature on its own. And index.js is gonna be our home page. So if I, let's hide some things here. I'm gonna hide the status bar. I'm gonna close that out. I don't need this page anymore. I'm gonna go into my terminal, npm run dev. And this is the development command that we're gonna to run to build out next applications. And look how fast that was, pretty quick. Let me open up localhost 3000 now. So let's open that up in our browser. Let's go take a look at what Next.js gives us. This is the default Next.js application. So when I talk about page level routing or file system routing, one of the cool things about this is if I go into my pages and I go new file about.js, and I'm going to, let me zoom out here. I'm going to export default function about return div about page. So this is our about page component. And notice you don't have to import React since uh, up here you don't have to do the IMR import React from React ever since React 17. So that's a really cool feature there. And here we're gonna go to our file over here and say forward slash about. And that's gonna give us the about page and that's awesome because in React, you had to bring in something like React Router and do all that setup yourself. Here in Next.js, you just create a file, a new component, and you have a new page. Cool thing about this is you can actually nest files. So you can say like, um, let's do tutorials slash uh, JavaScript.js. So now we have a tutorials folder. We have a JavaScript.js file, and I can do uh, export default function. And we can name this JavaScript div JavaScript page. And now I save, and now we have this page. If I go over here to forward slash tutorials slash JavaScript. So the cool thing about this is that the files and folders generate your URL structure for us. So that's item number one. Item number two that I really, really like about Next.js is something that I had to build in uh, to React.js, automatic code splitting. So to code split in React, you would have to bring in something like uh, React Loadable, or you would uh, lazy load some components. With Next.js, it comes out of the box for us, and we don't have to write any special code for it. So I can demonstrate this by going here, I'm gonna go into my terminal, clear that out, npm run build. So I'm gonna build out all of the JavaScript required to show off the site that we have here. And we'll let that run. Here we go, if I scroll up, let me zoom out a little bit. If I scroll up here, we have a bundle for each specific page. So there's the CSS, there's our app, there's our about page that we just created at 285 bytes, tutorials JavaScript at 295 bytes. So what's really cool about this, oh, and there's our home page for 3.47 kilobytes. What's really cool about this is we had to do no extra code. It came out of the box and we get that quality of life upgrade right out of the box for Next.js. 
So the cool thing about this is that you shouldn't be sending your JavaScript files, all of your entire app to a user if they just want to say, I just want to see the homepage, right? They shouldn't see 900 JavaScript files for all their pages. They should only see one. So that works out nicely. That's code splitting. That's number two. Number three on this section is API routes. Now, API routes are really, really cool because sometimes you might not be able to do everything you need to do inside of your JavaScript components, inside of your React components. Sometimes you need a backend server to do a little bit more processing than uh, a front-end component can do. So in that regard, serverless functions have come about and been a fantastic addition for building out these websites. And the cool thing about Next.js is that here in this API folder, it gives us access to API routes, which are serverless functions that are gonna run so that we can use Node and all the power that Node brings, all the power that Node packages brings us and the server to do stuff inside of a file right here. And the cool thing about this is your front end can actually talk to your API that you build all in your Next.js application. So to demonstrate this, if we're in the API folder, I just go over here forward slash API slash hello. And we need to run our npm run dev server again. So let's do that. So that's running and we go back here, refresh, and we should get some JavaScript out of there. So that's cool. And let me go over here and just update this real quick and say name is Chris Sev and Twitter is Chris underscore underscore Sev. Okay, so let's check that out, refresh here and we get a brand new JSON response from our API. Now you might be wondering, okay, API routes are cool. What are the main things that we could use them for? API routes are very usable when you are building out applications. And let's say you wanted to go talk to a third party service like Algolia. Let's say you had your API secret key and client key. That's not something you want in your React front end code. You want that on the server side where it's hidden from prying eyes on the client in the browser. So being able to use your API here to talk to external services like Stripe, like uh, Algolia, like all that good stuff is really useful. Number four on this list is image optimization. So I'm going to go into my Explorer here. And under public, I have a bear.jpg file. And I went and grabbed this from Unsplash. Look how <laughs> cute he is. So I'm going to have this bear.jpg. I'm going to go into my pages. Let's go into index.js. And actually let's delete everything here. So it's gonna go balance outward. And I'm using Emmet here for these kind of cool shorthand. And I'm gonna say image source is equal to forward slash bear.jpg. And we don't need this up here. So let's delete that. And we don't need that. So this is our new homepage, just an image. And let me go over here. I'm going to open up our terminal, our console, or sorry, network tab, go to the image tag. And I want to show you how Next.js optimizes images for us. I also have a full-sized video on Next.js's image optimization. But here, I just want to show it real quick. So I'm going to go to the home page. That is a 985 kilobyte file right there. So 985 kilobytes is a pretty large file. We can go over here and bring in the import image from next image. And now instead of this, I'm going to wrap it with an image tag right here. And we've got to give it a width. So let's go for 1920, uh, where height is 1080. So now just by changing out the HTML image tag for the Next.js image component, let's go back here. We are down to 244 bytes right there. So let me right click, hard reload. We get 199 kilobytes for this bear's image. So that's very impressive. We brought that down by uh, a fifth, 20% of the original file size. And that's all from just using Next.js's image component. We can take this a step further and go layout is equal to responsive so that it will serve the correct file size based on the browser size. So if I refresh here, we get 216, then that's fine. So I'm gonna go to my mobile and let me try to get you more room here. And if I do a, let me zoom out, running out of room over here. So right click, hard reload, 17 kilobytes 
for this 400 pixel width image. Now that's gigantic savings compared to the 900 something kilobytes that it was before. And as you scroll, notice it'll start loading up a bigger file size based on what you want for your browser. So really, really impressive feature there with the image component and the image optimization. Definitely check out my other video on the image optimization stuff. But the last one that I wanna talk about here is kind of the big, big feature that I really love Next.js for. All of the other ones you can add into React with some packages or a little bit of coding. But having them in Next.js is for sure a, a good peace of mind to not have to configure anything or write any new code. But here, my favorite thing is the ways that it lets us generate our site. So I get asked a lot about scotch.io and scotch.io is uh, the site that I built 2013. And this is a, started out as a WordPress site, went over to a custom Laravel install. I built my own CMS, that whole shebang. But I get asked a lot, what would you build Scotch in these days? And this next feature is a big reason why I would build Scotch with Next.js. And that is the ways that I can generate a site statically, uh, server-side rendered, or the dynamic incremental generation way. We can generate a static site. We can generate it from the server side uh, and do a server side rendering. Or what I really like is combining those two methods and saying, okay, well, we're gonna dynamically generate it on the server. And then after that, everybody that sees the page after that is gonna get a static version. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. You don't have to do a giant uh, HTML build up front, and you don't have to do dynamic, slow server side rendering. You can do both, and it's amazing. So the way we can do that is using the uh, export uh, function, get static props, and the get static paths. And I'll do a full video on how to do both of these better. But with both of these, we can generate dynamically and statically, which is amazing. And I'll definitely do a bigger video on this. It's such a big feature that it requires more than uh, this video can do. But what's cool too is you can actually say, let me uh, clear this out. Let me open up packages.json. If you want to statically generate your site, if your site isn't that large, you can definitely statically generate it. You can say export, next build, and next export. So now this export command should build us out some really nice HTML pages and we can serve those HTML files. So I'll run that. We'll see how that goes. Optimize build. Oh, and one thing to note here and a reason that you wanna go for a dynamically generated site is the image optimization requires a node server. So you can't use the static generation if you are using the image component. So it does need to take a little bit more of a dynamic node deployment to do this. So I'm just gonna change that back to an image tag. We'll delete that there. And now we should be able to export this. All right, here we go, optimize build and files were generated. So we can go into our explorer. This out folder is gonna generate all of the HTML files and we can go serve those on a website. So that's how we can generate HTML files for our pages, or we can dynamically deploy our uh, Next.js application. And I love that we have the option of both. So all in all, five really amazing features out of the box for Next.js. We have routing, we have code splitting, API routes, um, we have image optimization, and we have the ways to generate a site. So all five of those things out of the box for me is a compelling reason to use Next.js over just plain React. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this video. I definitely have a lot more Next.js content coming. And if you did like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next.